Hey, what's up, everyone? Thanks for joining me today. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 1, new creation versus all of creation. Colossians chapter 1 has caused no end of confusion to believers within the body of Christ, for sure. People have been saying that the Messiah pre-existed. So how did he pre-exist? Was he a human? Was he a spirit being? Did he become spirit? Did he become man? Was he spirit, became man, and then went back to heaven? These things just don't make sense. They don't line up with scripture. And we're going to talk about this today. I was watching this video with uh, Brother Sean from Kingdom in Context and Wes Blaze. And no disrespect to these guys. I uh, respect what they do, but I think it comes down to the scriptures. We, we need to look at the scriptures more closely at what's being said and not just gloss over them in our English because that's what's got us into all this all these troubles in the first place right so please don't take any disrespect to, towards them this is just about the scriptures and what the word says and we're going to put things back in the kingdom of context you would think right to understand what's actually be, being said here in Colossians and I want to point out too in this video that these guys are talking about um in, in the book of uh, Enoch, I believe it is, in Enoch, they bring up the verse, Enoch 48, verse 2, it says, In that hour was the Son of Man invoked before the Lord of hosts and his name, and in the presence of the Ancient of Days, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars in heaven were formed, his name was invoked in the presence of the Lord of hosts. So, does that say that he was created? Nope. It says that his name was invoked. There's a big difference there. His name was invoked. So that does not mean that he existed. That means exactly what the rest of scriptures say, that he was invoked. And they bring up another verse um, here. If you look at this, there's actually a different rendering here. They read from the Charles reference. And so, give me one second, let me pull this up. So this is the Ethiopic. You got Charles on the left and then Lawrence on the right. So if we do a little bit of research, if something doesn't seem to fit, we got to research and see, see what the heck's going on. So one of the verses they bring up, it says, Therefore the elect and concealed one existed in his presence before the world was created. In his presence he existed and has revealed to the saints at the righteous of the wisdom of the Lord of Spirits. But if you look over here at this other version, it says in verse 5, All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him, and will praise and bless and celebrate with the song of the Lord of Spirits. And for this reason he hath been chosen and hidden before him before the creation of the world and forevermore. So there again, that's that fits more in line with that he existed. It says here that he had been chosen and hidden before him, before the creation of the world. And this all goes back to John 1.1. 1, 1. The word was with Elohim. He didn't exist. He existed in his mind, in the mind of the Father. And then in these later days, he was manifested unto us. So we're going to look at these scriptures to see what's going on here in context of Colossians. And I'm my point is that Colossians chapter 1 is all about the new creation, not all of creation. And so we're going to put together all these verses to see what this is actually talking about. So context of Colossians chapter 1 is the new kingdom. So he died in the flesh, right? And he was risen with a divine spiritual body, just like a body that we should expect at his return. He's the first fruits from the dead, never to die no more the first and the last, the firstborn, the last Adam, right? So just look at this in Colossians chapter 15, verse 42 through 46. And this is the context of the resurrection. It says, so also in the resurrection of the dead, it, the body, it is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. 
It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it's raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And he says, and this was right, this was after he was risen. So he wasn't a life-giving spirit before because it says in verse 46, Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual. So the spiritual body, the, the spiritual man, he was not first. He did not exist first. That's why he's called the second Adam. The first Adam, and then there's a second Adam. He was a human being, flesh and bone and body and just like everything was. He's the precursor to everything else. He is the rule, not the exception to the rule. And this is what we're all going to follow after. So it says, how, how be it that which was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and then afterward that which is spiritual so colossians the book of colossians is all about him ruling in the new kingdom the new creation and we're going to look at colossians and see this starting in verse 5 it says for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard before the word of truth the basura so we starting off in the context here in heaven, the, the hope that's laid up for you in heaven. Where did the Messiah go? He went up into heaven, right? Verse 13, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His beloved Son. So this transfer, this is the prolepsis, right? It hasn't happened yet. It's prophetic that it's it has happened, but it has not happened yet. So He's transferred us into the kingdom of of his dear son and this is the context we're talking about this kingdom that the messiah has made to rule over him verse 15 says he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn and this is where people get thrown up thrown off the firstborn of all new the all the new creation to be raised from the dead right he's the firstborn to be raised from the dead, the firstborn of the new creation. And how do we know? How can we can we really add this word new? Is that okay to do? Well, we're understanding the context because we have many, many verses that say Adam is the first man. We just read one in Corinthians. So Paul's not a schizo. He, he's not writing to confuse people, but our English has confused it in the way they've uh, organized the words it just doesn't make sense. So if we have all these verses that say Adam is the first man of creation, we all know that. God created him, raised him from the dust of the earth, breathed life into him, gave him the spirit. You know, this is the first Adam, the first man. There was no man that existed before Adam. Adam means man. It means mankind. He was the first Adam. So we have a conflict here. We have... All these verses that say Adam is the first man, and then we have something here that says, hey, this guy existed before Adam. Well, we don't just throw out all the other verses, right? We need to, to view the, the difficult verses in the light of the clear verses. And so all those clear verses don't just go away saying Adam's the first one and that Elohim was the only one that created and that there's nobody besides him, that nobody was with him. He was all by himself. There was no co-creator. We've got tons and tons and tons of verses that say that, but we've got a few here that seem kind of funny. So do we just throw out all the, the clear verses for these couple complicated verses to fit into our doctrines? No, we don't do that. We got to keep reading. We need to understand the kingdom in context right so let's keep reading ephesians chapter 3 it says to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the called out assembly the manifold wisdom of elohim so this is language that paul uses a lot talking about 
in the heavens, in the heavenly. This is where the Messiah went. That that ultimate being born again is to be raised up into that new spiritual body and enter into that kingdom. And he is the way to show us how we enter into that kingdom. Let's keep reading here. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 20. It says, For by, and this is where people get screwed up, English, the word by is actually in, E-N. In him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, visible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by, which is actually the word dia, which means through him and for him. So everything was made through in and through him, for him, right? Because he has preeminence. And it says this in verse 17, he is before, and that's the word pro. It's, he's on the forefront, the first one to rise of the firstborn. So if you see the word pro, that means forward thinking, like preeminence. Pro is like pre, and it's, it's before. It's not necessarily in linear as far as time is concerned but it's linear in the sense that hey in front of everything else right and so what is the context of what we're talking about we're talking about the final kingdom we're talking about in heaven which is what's going on here so he's the forefront he's the first one to rise from the dead the firstborn all things in the new kingdom and by and in him, all things consist. So all things consist. It doesn't say all things exist. It says all things consist, verse 17. And that word consist just means they're held together by what he has done, right? Verse 18. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning. So this is what I'm talking about here. He's the beginning. He's the firstborn from the dead into his kingdom then everything he might have preeminence. And that's our word there, pro tuo, right? That's the forefront. He's the first of all of us to be raised from the dead, the forefather of the faith, right? He is the first fruits. Verse nine, 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace, through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. So it's a reconciliation. So you got the old man, the old Adam, first Adam, second Adam, right? So if things are being reconciled, restored back to the new man, the, the new Adam, the second Adam. Having been made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So he was chosen as the son, seen in vision, seen just like we did in Enoch, of the prophets that would be handed the kingdoms of heaven and earth. So a lot of people get messed up on that too, looking at Daniel and these old, they're, these are their visions, right? A vision doesn't mean it's necessarily actually happening, but it's a vision of something that is to come, that is to happen. So he did not exist with the ancient of days and some spiritual, ethereal, you know, existence. You even think about the word pre-exist. What is that? How do you exist before you exist? The word doesn't even make sense, right? You can't pre-exist. The only way you can pre-exist is in the mind. And that's how he, and that's how all of us existed. We were all foreknown before the foundation of the world. We all existed in the mind of the Father, but not spiritually, not physically. My spirit, my soul, they are me. There is no separation between those things. My spirit doesn't go off and spirit's just what gives us that spark. And my soul is my mind, my thoughts. So when our bodies stop breathing, when they stop inhaling, the Nefesh Kai goes out, the body dies, and the spirit returns back to the Father because it just goes away. There's no more zeal. There's no more life left in the human body. 
so they don't exist outside and that's really like the kind of the danger with some of this i've seen some of these videos that's like saying the dead are sleeping or they're in some kind of purgatory and i've got videos on that you can check those out on uh the dead are still dead please watch those videos if you think that people are still living or there's some kind of consciousness that's going on inside um, take a chance to study that out and you'll see that it's just not supported by scripture it's just more poor um, translations and eisegesis putting these doctrines onto the scriptures so look at second peter <clears throat> chapter 1 verses 3 through 4 verse 3 according as his divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and holiness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that these that by these you might be partakers of that divine nature escape to the corruption that is in the world through the lust so that's what this is all about is Messiah is the first born of the new creation, and we are made partakers of that divine nature, that Godhead that dwelleth in him, right? Poured another poor word, but in the fullness of the deity, right? The fullness is being resurrected. That's the ultimate goal. That's our hope, is to get these new bodies to put away death, that there is no more sting, right? Hebrews chapter 12, 22 and 23 says, But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable angels in the festival gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. So we are entering into that. We are in that process. So we've been given the holy spirit to have this down payment this deposit of what it's like and we can see our brother the messiah not our creator but our brother the messiah was resurrected and that's our hope that's what we can look forward to is to be like him then we shall know him as he is let's look at some more context here though in colossians chapter 2 colossians chapter 2 says having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised <clears throat> prolepsis right with him through faith in the power working of god who raised him from the dead so elohim raises the son right he's the one that raises and i heard a comment i think on this video these guys were talking about that well he was sent right he was sent well so, yes yeah, so was john so is jeremiah these guys were sent by elohim that does not mean they came from heaven and if you haven't watched the video check out the video i did just a little while ago on john chapter 3 of the man coming down from heaven or you can look at uh, this video here pre-existence um, pre-existing condition you know and I, I go in a little bit further on the pre-existence to how it just doesn't it just doesn't work against the scripture so moving on chapter 3 verse 1 it says and then you have been raised up with mashiach see the things that are above where mashiach is seated at the right hand of elohim in the new kingdom that we are all waiting on so still in the context the colossians here still talking about the new kingdom still talking about the new creation verse 4 when christ mashiach who is our life appears then also you also will appear with him in glory how's that well with your new resurrected body so this is the context we're talking about in colossians it's all about the new creation it's not a saying he existed and created co-created none of that throw it out it's all garbage revelation 1 5 establishes this again and from yahushua hamashiach who is the faithful witness and the firstborn of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood so metaphorically speaking right in the covenant like like the lamb's blood sprinkled on the people we are been washed with that in this new kingdom in this new heaven and earth 
he is our brother of the forefront. So we got just a little sample of it, just a little sample of what we can expect in the new kingdom where all things consist because of him, because of his preeminence, because he obeyed the word, he kept the commandments, he did not worship Elohim as some bull or as a man or pre-existence, this or that. He knew the scriptures, he stayed faithful, did not get involved in any of that stuff. He kept the word all the way through, knowing who he was. When he reads the pages of Psalms, right? He reads those that I am the anointed king. He reads those as a king would be trained in that stuff and applies it to himself. And we can do that too. We should be doing that. Beloved, now are we the sons of Elohim. So we should be looking at that, reading the scriptures and say, he's talking about me, right? And it doesn't mean we existed somewhere and like, you know, we came down here. We know he didn't come down from heaven. We know that he was born like a human being. I mean, there's tons of scriptures that support it from the seed of David. Multiple verses that support it. So we don't just throw that out. We got to keep it. So we build the entirety of our context and we won't stumble if we don't add these ideas, these concepts, just because... We have a few verses that seem like, well, how is he, how did he, born of a woman, then he's saying he come down from heaven. It's either one or the other. He couldn't do both. You know, that's, that's just not scriptural. We're living here in the real world. This is a real thing that really happened. And, you know, there was no pre-existence. I'm sorry. Scriptures just do not support that. So I hope you got blessed by this and if you have questions definitely leave your comments in there uh let's hash these scriptures out and make make sure it's um it's the truth right that's all we're after is the truth no one's trying to um trying to destroy anyone or anything like that we just want the truth and the truth is y'all loves you and so do i shalom